Uh, hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a second um, episode in this series looking at turning um, the Batman, Tom and Friends Renaissance model into a more um, plausible representation of Dolgok, which is the loco this model was based on. Um, progress so far, as you saw in the last video at the end, I'd pulled the component, the, the model apart completely. Um, I've now gone a bit further, so um, the only thing I've done anything with is the body casting. Um, as you can tell, it's had the paint stripped off. Um, so this was a, a case of dunking it in my favourite um, solution, which is Dettol of all things. Um, for those countries who maybe, I don't know, don't have Dettol, um, it's this stuff. It's a, a kind of brown liquid um, and it's for kind of cleaning up, I guess, um, I've used it for cleaning kind of uh, floors and things. You often smell it in hospitals and things for cleaning. Um, it also talks about first aid, um, wound cleaning, so like a very diluted solution um, to kind of wipe down grazes and things like that. Um, but um, if you leave um, metal in it that's covered in paint for long enough, it flakes off. Um, you can kind of just about see that this is, it's got lots of chunks of, of the paint in it. You can still see some of the the black chimney and the black linings and markings. Um, I did take a, a photo when the, the part was in the solution. I'll stick that up here and you can see a bit better uh, what it looks like. But it literally it just kind of, I don't know whether it, what exactly it does because it doesn't obviously dissolve the paint because the paint comes off in sheets. So I'm assuming it dissolves um, the kind of whatever causes the paint to stick um, to the metal. Anyway, it works really well. You just leave it for a while um, and then when you lift the part off, Pat out, you can just use a, a toothbrush to kind of flick off any remaining paint. Um, in this case, I found that the the orange all came off without me touching it, but the black on the coal bunkers and on the chimney needed just a gentle touch with the toothbrush and then it, it flaked right off. But you can see it's um, it's cleaned up nicely. There's tiny little bits in among the coal, but that's not a huge issue. Um, and there are some bits of orange still underneath where I couldn't quite get the toothbrush in to get them out, but they're on the bottom, so I don't really care. Um, <clears throat> Then the other major thing, which I'm sure you will all have noticed, is that I chopped the chimney off. So here's the original um, chimney from the model. Um, I cut it off. Um, actually, went peeing across my study. I had to go find it just so I could show you in the video. Um, and then I've completely smoothed over. If you look at the original, if you look at the original model, you'll find that there's the chimney, but then there's also the kind of the base cap where it kind of um, molds to the smoke the top of the smoke box. Um, so I've filed that off, filed it nice and smooth, uh, casting polishes up really nicely uh, and then I've drilled a hole in the top. Now you can see that this hole is not circular. Um, there's a nice line, a casting line, all the way down the centre here for the two holes, the top of the, the dome and everything and I marked up and I drilled and I ended up with the hole on one side of the line. So I've opened it out slightly to this side so that now um, the hole does cover the line and fortunately um, that all gets hidden under the replacement. So the replacement is one of the brass castings from the Narrow Planet kit. Um, I had to do a tiny bit of tidying up um, of the casting, not very much at all. It's really nice and clean. Um, there wasn't, as I say, there wasn't very many. Um, this is off the, I think, off the first batch of um, detailing kits. So the casting, had the, the mold hadn't been through too many, too many castings. Um, it's quite nice. I managed to just damage the bottom with a pair of pliers and it was a few minutes before I record the video so I will um, go back and smooth that out. But anyway, um, it will fit in the hole and looks, um, if I can get it the right way around, uh, there we go, and looks, looks the part. Um, I'm having to hold it quite tightly because obviously the hole now is too big and it just flops to one side if we, if we don't hold it. But you can see clearly the difference between the two the two chimneys um, the original is very very thin and 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 and, and um, doesn't taper out to quite such a large top either and also has a much smaller a much smaller base where it meets the smart box um, whereas this looks much better compared with the paired with the prototype so that's that's what I've done so far um, next up is the fact that <coughs> um, Dolgok never has never had coal on this side um, so um, just like I did on um, Scarlowe, I'm going to have to remove this. Now, this casting seems a lot softer 
than the casting for Scarlo. The casting for Scarlo was a nightmare. Just you couldn't really take a file to it. It just you just didn't make a dint. Uh, whereas cutting this and filing this smooth was really easy. So um, on Scarlo, I had to set up the lathe. Um, the, my lathe is here Unimat three, and I have the the milling column for it. And I set it up as a mill and milled off the top. Um, now the advantage of that was it gave me a nice smooth flat surface um, but getting this held nice and tight in the it well getting Scar Lowy's body held nice and tight in the lathe was a pain this one I think might not be too bad because I've got a nice straight section here I can grip in the in the machine vise um, so we'll have a look I mean the problem is I don't want to grip it too tight and flex it if I think this is a softer casting um, so I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to try and file this off or whether I'm going to um, mill it out. Um, the problem with filing it off is obviously I don't want to damage the lip around the edge here. So I have to kind of bring in the file from this side only and not catch the, the dome or anything like that. So the mill may be an easier option, although I still have to make sure I don't catch the dome with the, uh, with the, with the mill. Um, yeah with the end cutter but we'll, we'll we shall see that's that's going to be the next the next job i can't really start you know i can't attach the chimney or, or do any other detailing or, or anything on here until i've got this chunk off um so yeah so that's the next step but it's it's moved on quite nicely as i say the, the paint stripper i mean you can buy lots of lots of paint strippers um but the the detol stuff works works really really nicely on on, on metal castings um, you can't use it so much on plastic it tends to make the plastic a bit soft um, which is why I've not done the the foot plate or anything with the cylinders yet um, but for, for these castings they, it leaves a really nice uh, nice finish um, so yeah so there we go that's where we're at for now um, I've done a little bit of research and worked out which of the the cab etches I want to use um, for the older slightly older version uh, of the loco um, I need to find some decent um, photos so that I can do the, the back head uh, and work out exactly where all the pipes run. Um, but I've got a, a few places to look for that. Um, somebody's made a suggestion that there was a, a, a good photo, I think a 1950s um, article in the Times. Um, so I'll go see if I can dig that out because um, apparently that's got a really detailed photo from inside the cab, uh, which, will be, which will be good. Um, so yeah, we'll see how see how that goes. But yeah, as I, as I say, uh, butchering of the of the model is moving along nicely. Uh, there's no way I can put it back together now. Um, so yeah, there we go. Happy so far.